Three, two, two, one. Click on it. On the last episode of Finding Your Roots, The Seedlings, campers opened their individual DNA test results and saw their genetic ancestry for the first time. I'm 100% European. 0.2% Korean. Cool. And you're 55.7%. And 0.1% Sub-Saharan Africa. The test revealed where in the world campers might find their ancestors and also gave clues to the routes those ancestors might have taken to get to North America. But the DNA had more to tell them. When they clicked again, they found reports on select inherited genetic traits and the percentage likelihood those traits would appear. All of this information begged the question, how much of what people see about you is decided by your DNA? And what types of traits get passed down from your parents and grandparents? What information kind of is contained in your DNA, do you think? Your genes. Your genes? What, are, what does that say about you, do you think? Uh, it, like your hair color, your eye color. Uh-huh. OK, what else? Your traits. What kind of traits? Like um, the traits that you get from your parents. Like, uh -huh. like sarcasm. Ooh. I get that from my mom. Oh, that's fascinating. Hold on to that one. Are these all, all, tra are all traits the same? What are some different traits we're discussing now? Right? Physical. 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 How, how, why might he be sarcastic? Why might you, uh, you be talkative? Maybe from the way they were raised, like they were brought up with these people who had these traits, too. Yeah. So very, very good. So sometimes it's hard to tell how much the stuff comes from the DNA versus, right, hair color and eye color. That one seems real, re pretty simple. That one is kind of, right, but even height. So my point is there's a lot of things that kind of go into all these things, from sarcasm to height to smarts to other things, and I think that's what we're trying to figure out. Are you going to compare to your sisters? Yeah. Oh. I had to roll my stool over to Ella's station and look at it with her. Freckles, likely a lot of freckles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of her studies was her hair was like supposed to be like blonde or something like no, around. It was supposed to be like straight, but my hair is not straight. Like yeah. little or no yeah. unibrow. That's good. Looking at their DNA results, a few campers were puzzled to find that a trait listed as likely to appear actually didn't. Let's talk about the trait. Can you guys tell the group the conversation you had about lactose intolerance. Okay, so uh, my report said that I was most likely to be lactose intolerant. And um, so at first I thought that I was lactose intolerant. And I was really confused because I was like, wait, I drink a lot of milk. I'm definitely lactose intolerant. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is a beautiful point, right? Because here's what happened. You said, you were telling me about this story and you said, I found out that I am lactose intolerant, right? And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. You tell me whether you are or aren't. The DNA does not tell you whether you are or aren't. You tell me whether you are or aren't. And if it lines up with the DNA, great. If it doesn't, well, <laughs> because it doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't tell the whole story. It does not, OK? And so that's why I love what you said just now. He's like, look, I'm, I don't know what's in the DNA. I haven't even looked. I'm lactose intolerant. Now, have you checked to see whether or not it, that trait is in and it? And it and said it, likely. And there you go. Beautiful, right? So your DNA says most likely to be. Your DNA says most likely to be. You are lactose intolerant, and you are? Not. It said that lactose intolerant increases with age, and likely when I'm a teenager, I'm going to be way more lactose intolerant. Maybe, like, I yeah. may be lactose intolerant. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. In fact, I want you to go home and have a big, tall glass of milk just to celebrate the fact that your phenotype does not match with your genotype. Wonderful job. Give yourself a round of applause. OK, wonderful job. Let's take a break. That question about the relationship between what's in our DNA and who we are, I mean, questions don't get any more provocative than that one. To see that play out kind of organically uh, in the context of lactose intolerance and in the context of you know, just something she just does every day, which is drink milk, I think was really profound and moving to me. During the break, Mentors set up materials for a test that, for some, would cause an extreme reaction courtesy of a dominant gene. You ever hear this language of a gene being dominant or something else being recessive, a trait, right? Anybody familiar with that? Dominant is something that takes over, that's the main thing, and recessive is something that brushes over. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a kind of an effective way to think about dominance and recessive. Now, it really only matters because we're diploid. 
right? You have two copies of right, every single gene or variants of every single gene. And sometimes all you need is one copy of it. If you have one copy of it, and whenever you have that copy, whether it came from maternal or paternal, mom or dad, and your phenotype is that one thing, we call that dominance. It's dominant. You have it, your phenotype is going to match that. Whereas recessive, right, right, it can be masked. It can be covered up by something. And there are a lot of traits uh, that are like that. Uh, we're going to test one of them, which is really, really cool. One of the traits on the DNA test was the ability to taste bitter compounds, an ability we can test with a chemical compound called PTC. The problem, the ability to taste PTC is a dominant trait, right? So if you have this gene from either mom or dad, if you have this trait, right, you can taste this, this chemical compound in some things. If you don't have it, you don't taste it. Why is this interesting? Is everybody in here like the same kind of food? Do we all like the same food, right? Who likes salty food? Who likes the salty food? Who are my salty food people? Who likes, who likes spicy food? I eat spicy food every day. Who like, what's the type of food you do not? Any type of food that you really just do not like? I, I don't like tomatoes. You don't like tomatoes? Yes, I hate tomatoes. I hate tomatoes. I don't like dry bro broccoli. You don't like dry broccoli? Some of these things have genetic roots. Clean your hands with the hand wipe provided by your teacher. We're gonna be putting something on our mouth, so we wanna make sure we're Sanitary, there you go. It is a laboratory, so we want to be clean. Place the entire strip of PTC saturated paper in your mouth. I would suggest cracking open the mint <laughs> prior. Now, some people are going to taste it. Some people are going to be like, mmm. Some of them are going to like nothing. And when it's a super taster, oh, you going to know. Yeah, I'm probably going to be a non-taster, too. Like, or non-taster or a taster. There's nothing that, like, yeah, there's no problem. It's not bad, it's just the brain responding to something. Okay, are we cool? We're cool, guys, we got this, we got this. Um, on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I can't hate anything. Yeah, it tastes like this. Yeah, like the alpha. That's terrible. Ew. Oh, it tastes like this. It tastes good. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's look at the mint. All right. So what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Let's 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 summarize quickly. Now that's a super taster. I mean, you should have seen this. I saw the whole thing from this direction. That was incredible. I mean, you should have. Ah! It was one of those horror movie faces. That's a super taster, okay? That was a taster face. You're a taster. I think I'm a taster. You're not a taster. Not a taster. The minute your brain gets that, gets whiff of that chemical, boom! Yeah. Right? I saw that it, the, almost, almost the instant it hit your tongue and certainly would hit your tongue. Put a napkin, take your candy. Non-taster. Non-taster. Write down your result. How many people were tasters? How many people were tasters? All right. I don't think you were. And then we have non-tasters. How many non-tasters? There are 13 kids in this class. It would be 10 to 3. 10 to 3 who could not taste PTC. I wish I was a non-taster because it tasted so, it so bad. It bad. It tastes bad. Spend a minute or so drawing a graph. This approach has great power, and even for kids who aren't particularly interested in science, learning something about DNA will help them become more literate citizens. So we think this is an exciting and potentially empowering approach that will increase the interest in science among America's young people and enhance science literacy. There's no right or wrong. These are just different things about who we are as people, right? Kids love to study themselves. We can show you how you can bring the tools of finding your roots into your after-school program, summer camp, or classroom. Check out what happens when kids study their own DNA and family history by viewing our education programs and trying our research-based curriculum materials. For more information, visit us online.
Major support for Finding Your Roots, The Seedlings, has been provided by the Benkovic Family Foundation. With additional support from WETA, Public Television for Greater Washington, the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research at Harvard, and the following. Thank you.